Is it teen spending or has Abercrombie just lost the magic? I think teen spending is part of it. Abercrombie is a huge company, four and a half billion dollars of revenue last year. It's a global business. They've got many brands. They've got Abercrombie and Fitch, Abercrombie for Kids, Hollister, and you know they've been expanding all around the all around the world. So you know it's a it's a very powerful company. What they have right now. Uh, based on this fall off of sales is a huge inventory problem. And that's what's driving the profitability way down. You think on half a year, if they're missing 15% of, of top line sales, that's a huge number. So they're facing a liquidation problem. It, uh, is it a risk though that they're only catering to teens or kids? When you look at a gap, J. Crew, H and M, they really have a broader audience. You're not gonna see adults walking into an Abercrombie and Fitch and pick up a pair of jeans and a flannel shirt. They just don't shop there. Is it wise to only cater to the young shopper? Well, you know, they, they know their audience very well. And you know, they look at it, it's probably between fifteen and twenty two years old and you get an umbrella effect, a few younger and a few older. So uh, I, I think where they where they focus in the past is a sweet spot. That's where kids spend their money, that's where young adults spend their money. And they've been through this before. You know, if you look at the downturn in 2008, they got hit really hard. And now, you know, my money is on them longer term. So, so they're, they're going to have to clear out this stuff by doing a absolutely. lot of promotioning, but then they're going to have to bring a new product that's going to move. Do they need to get somebody new on the design team? Do they need to refresh? I mean, as somebody who has, you know, had to cater to the customer before, sure. how do you figure out what they want? Well, I think Mike Jeffries is a consummate merchant. He's been doing this for, for a long, long time. Uh, he built this brand from basically no revenue to four and a half billion dollars. So he knows how to do it. He'll surround himself with the right people. They're cutting back on some things that haven't been working. So he's closing the, um, the Gilly Hicks stores. Remember back in 2008-9, he closed Rule, which was for the customer you were talking about, Stephanie, slightly older. So that but didn't that work. But that never picked up here. It, you're right, it in didn't. In spite of the great name. That, that's right, it didn't work, but he's willing to take, you know, to take the pain when he has to. And, you know, if it means new design talent, they're, they're very smart merchants. They'll be looking for everything. Joe, Julie's been following the analyst day that Abercrombie and Fitch is holding right now, and I've been yeah. trying to keep an eye on it out of the corner of my eye. This seems to me to be a company that's just throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? They say they're going to prioritize direct to consumer sales over stores. At the same time, they say they're going to increase their presence in outlet centers and they're going to redesign their U.S. storefronts. And they're going to expand more aggressively in Japan and China. Right. Like, that doesn't sound like a cohesive strategy. Yeah, well, it sounds like they're going to tread water for a while and let the dust settle on the consumer and, and see where fashion goes and find some new fashion momentum. So, where does that leave the stock, though? Dead in the water? You know, I think this morning, uh, Piper Jaffrey, in fact, uh, had it, uh, you know, basically staying flat. And I think they had, a, they had a buy on it, as I recall. So remember, this company is still producing a good deal of cash flow, a, a good deal of, of operating income. So, you know, it's, it's a, at a bottom point now. And, and I should mention, to Joe's point also, the company has emphasized in the call today that it's going to keep generating that cash and it's going to keep returning that cash yeah. to shareholders. So that's something also that could bribe. Could provide sort of a floor under the sky. And it has no debt. So this isn't a J.C. Penney situation. Mm -hmm. They have no debt at all. They're generating cash flow. And, uh, you know, as it is, they're still going to have operating earnings of about a buck fifty a share this year. Optimistically, then, how long does it take to turn around? Well, you have to understand that uh, fourth quarter, they already purchased the inventory, not for a 15% comp store decline. So that's going to be problematic for them. But they, they you know, they basically uh, accounted for that in, in their forecast. So Q1, they're going to play their inventories back. So they're not going to be planning for flat, comparable store sales. They're going to be planning down some number. So they'll become much more efficient on inventory. They won't have to liquidate that stock. Their profit margins will, will accelerate, and they'll get back to a normal running rate. So would you even characterize it as a turnaround, or they just simply need to, to get more strategic? I, I think they're very strategic. I think they're dealing with some, some current events right now. They'll get their arms around it over the next six, nine months, and they'll bounce back pretty quickly. And it sounds like you don't think um, that Mike Jeffries is in any trouble. I mean, there was some controversy over the summer as some older comments that he made came up about who should and shouldn't be shopping at the stores. Now the sales downturn. But it sounds like you think he's, he's firmly at the helm. I, I think he is one of the greatest merchants in the United States. And he's you compare him to whom? Just, just Nicky Drexler. Really? Absolutely. He built this brand from zero to four and a half billion dollars. So just think about that over the All right, last then 25 we think years. About, should we think about his name as a possible replacement at JCPenney? I, I think that he's doing exactly what he wants to do. 
and uh, I don't think there's another job in, in, in the world that he would be interested in other than running Abercrombie. Here's a more complicated question for you. Sure. Proxy, yeah, season, proxy season is five months away. Yeah. Mike Jeffries <laughs> made more than eight million bucks last year. Way what down should, from where he was. What should, the board, what should the board do this time around? I, I think he's probably uh, under a contract that will provide his, his compensation package for the future and whatever that is it is. So uh, I think his bonus, his incentive compensation is probably going to take a big hit because I can't imagine that he hit the thresholds you know, in terms of the goals for the business. So he's got a base salary, he's got some long term. Salary long -term of one and a half million dollars. Yeah, so, yes, so that's true enough. Data. I mean the year before last he made 48 million Yeah, and the year before that <laughs> he made something bigger than that. So I, I think that it's not about, you know, it's not about the one-year salary from Mike Jeffries. It's about the future and how he brings this brand back.